Hello there everybody, it is uh, launch week of Star Wars Outlaws. I am just getting over having COVID, so I look and sound terrible. Apologies in advance for that. Um, so I'm just going to be going through and watching some of the trailers that have come out in the last couple of days. There's a launch trailer, there's one about Nyx and ND5, uh, there's one about the building the open worlds, there's a season pass trailer. Ugh. But um, yeah, going to give a few things a bit of a look and... Um, yeah, kind of like the, the last hype fest before the game comes out. I'm not buying the uh, special edition, I'm not getting the early access because I don't want to pay 70 odd bucks for something that I might not even like, you know? So um, yeah, let's, uh, uh, let's start out with the launch trailer. We'll start from there and see how we go. K Vess, the underworld's favorite new scoundrel. Your one shot. I really hope there's a dueling Save mechanic. Filled with 157 million credits, and I can get you inside. Get in. I love Nyx already. This job, it's a death wish. Your lives are over. Your family, friends, gone. There's no part of the galaxy you can hide. Armor really is the most useless thing in the Star Wars you universe, hey? Get in with the underworld's most dangerous syndicates. <laughs> and pull off the greatest heist the Outer Rim has ever seen. I'm in. I mean, it looks fun. I'm not gonna lie, it looks fun. Um, I feel like a lot of people are really down on this game for some reason. The only thing, th th there's two things that I'm not like super sold on. One is the story so far, because I don't know, this. The heist thing doesn't super speak to me all that much, um, but you know, could be good. Hope it's good. I do hate this part here. The amount of times I've seen someone get hit with a helmet while wearing a helmet, and it and it completely incapacitates them. Like, it's so annoying. But whatever. Um, yeah, I don't like the heist aspect of all that much. Well, I don't not like it. I just, I'm not invested in it yet because I haven't played the game yet. Um, and the only other thing is just the ship stuff. I don't love the look of it, to be honest. I, I, I don't think it looks fantastic. I don't know. It's just got that on rails feeling. I don't know to it. N not on rails is the right word, but yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Cool trailer. I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with this game, though. Um, let's go for the let's go for the season pass trailer. Let's pull off that band aid. Extend your journey into the underworld with the Star Wars Outlaws season pass. Expect to cross paths with familiar faces and new daunting threats. Starting with the exclusive day one mission and the Kessel Runner character pack. Followed by two additional story packs and cosmetic bundles. Expand your experience with all new stories, quests, and areas to discover. A Pirate's Fortune. Is that going to be um, Hondo? If Hondo is in this game, that, that that's like making me consider <laughs> getting getting the season pass. Like, I'll probably get it eventually because it'll be cheaper later on. But uh, just seeing that now, if, if Pirate's Fortune has Hondo in it, that could be really cool. Um, I really hope there is a... Sabak mini game in this thing. I haven't kept up with a lot of the game lately. I um, have been sort of skipping it because I wanted to go into it mostly fresh, but now I'm just like, oh, I'll definitely start looking at some stuff. Anyway, discover. Sorry. Meet with Jabba again in the exclusive mission, Jabba's Gambit, available at launch. Following Kay's first encounter with Jabba in the main game, the Hut Cartel leader summons her to settle an old debt ND5 has neglected. Now, it is time to collect. Also included in the season pass and available at launch <laughs> is the Kessel Runner character pack. 
featuring new cosmetics for Kay and Nyx. The first story pack, Wildcard, will launch in fall 2024. Kay Vess finds herself forced to work for the Empire as she's sent to infiltrate an elusive casino ship to participate in a high-stakes Sabak tournament. There, Kay will join forces with the notorious Lando Calrissian, an alliance set up for explosive results as they unveil a conspiracy that will lead them into the most secret and secure part of Miragana. Two cosmetic bundles, Cartel Ronan and Hunter's Legacy, will also be available to Season Pass owners alongside the first story pack. It's just like, why is there so much stuff that you guys have made for the game that you're selling as chunks? I don't know. I, I hate DLC and stuff being announced before... Well, I hate DLC being announced and you know what it is before the game comes out. Like, I, I, I always think about Starfield. And they were like, oh, you know, you can buy the season pass and get Shattered Space. But we had no idea what Shattered Space was. All we had was the name. And now that we know what it is, I'm just like, oh, hell yes. Shattered Space sounds awesome. I can't wait for that. But, like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, why are you revealing it so early? Because it, to me, it's just saying that you've taken chunks of the game and you're selling it later on. Uh. The second story pack, A Pirate's Fortune, will be available in spring 2025. K, Nix, and ND5 are launched on a perilous treasure hunt with legendary pirate Hundo Onaka. <laughs> yes! Offering them a chance to turn their fortune around. Perfect. The season pass is included in the gold and ultimate editions of Star Wars Outlaws. Too which expensive. Also offer three days of early access <coughs> to play the game from August 27th. And if you pre-order, you get the Kessel Runner bonus pack, which includes cosmetics for your speeder and for the Trailblazer. Well, there you go. I had no idea that Hondo was going to be in the um, in the DLC. <sighs> it's not going to make me buy it straight up because uh, paying seventy bucks or something. There's no point. And like, sure, I get to play a bit early, but I have to work this week. I'm back at work, and I'm already tired enough from having COVID. So, yeah. I'll get it eventually, but that is very cool that it's going to be Hondo. Um, yeah, look, those DLCs will be fun. I'm sure they will be. Um, PC, we don't need... Uh, what else we got here? Galaxy... Uh, we'll go to the Galaxy teaser. Let's give that one a go. These are just the worlds, I imagine. Is it just the four worlds still? Akiva, Tashara, Kajimi, Tatooine? Akiva looks nice. Oh, hey, buddy. Red Dead vibes from this place. This is nice. I'm excited to get to Kajimi. Rest in peace, everybody. Of course, Tatooine. Oh, that's cool. I mean, it looks good. It looks good. Uh, I'm excited to explore these places. I hope there's stuff in here that like is like worth checking out. Uh, all right, what's next? We got Nyx. 
Yeah, let's go Nixon ND5. It's <clears throat> fantastic seeing the response on Nixon ND5. Everyone's so excited to just share more and show really who these characters are and what actual stories they will go through. <sighs> Star Wars is very much a story about friendship and family. Kay was going to need a companion to help guide her through the underworld. Nyx is a new creature. He's called a Merkel. We designed him here at Massive in close collaboration with Lucasfilm Games. We always lead with story, and so a lot of Nyx's arc and the different. I love Nyx so much. I think it's just because I have cats. Like anything vaguely cat like is just like my favorite. So he needed to have some sort of uh, tough side to him. You know, he has a lot of skills that were based on, for example, a pangolin. It is definitely a predator. He's ferocious. But he also has a soft side, and he really needed that. So he also has very soft fur on his belly. You can give him a belly rub. We really wanted Nyx to be able to communicate. And for that, we added his ears based on the axolotl. But he actually uses it a lot to be very expressive. You'd be surprised the range you can cover in terms of Nix's squeaks. And we'd actually write to, you know, this is an angry squeak, this is a curious squeak, this is an inquisitive squeak. I would start by making some sounds, and they'd say, yes, more of that, less of that, until we kind of clarified it right into something that locks into. I fucking love D. Bradley Baker, man. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> And in a lot of cases, it's, it's less is more, that like a dog or something, where it's not always talking, but it's always thinking, and it's always listening. That tracks back to... My girlfriend's my using the sewing here. machine. I hope that's not too loud. I think I drew upon Sabak. her as inspiration for the tone of, of Nyx. What the team was very passionate about as well was uh, to take inspiration... Dude, from I'm getting all my wishes and today. Really shows in the design as well, the way that his animations and the way he moves throughout the world. We had a puppeteer with an actual puppet on set at mocap, so he had a presence on set with Umbly as Kay. It worked very well. <laughs> Having that puppet so That's much awesome. the performance of the actors that when we translate it into a CG, it feels like they really interact with that character. We rely on Nyx uh, for uh, conveying some of Kay's unspoken emotions. She doesn't feel as alone and she feels validated and reassured through her companion, through her family. It's almost codependent, but it's a symbiotic relationship. They give each other what they need. Camille, the puppeteer, was fantastic. She made this whole puppet, it was great, and people really connected to it. So we would take that 3D data, then the animation, <coughs> and massive food animate on top of that. Nyx was created by so many different departments, and the animation department added so much to him, but definitely also D. Bradley Baker, who is voicing Nyx. He, he added this whole layer to Nyx as well. He really reminds me of my pets. We think that people are going to really connect with these two best friends who are trying to survive in the galaxy together. And we're hoping that they welcome them into their hearts, just like some of the other Star Wars characters. Everything already have, be mate. right, Nyx. Hey, Andy. It speaks to the beauty of Star Wars, right? You take something that is so simple, like a beat-up coat, and then you throw it onto something extraordinary, like a droid, and you get something completely new and exciting. He has a trench coat, he's covering up his battle scars, because he's a BX commando from the Clone Wars era. But eventually the Clone Wars ended, and he ended up you know, getting in deeply involved in the underworld, working as an enforcer droid. And then from that time period, from where the Clone Wars ended to when he meets K, that's really a mystery that's going to be unveiled for players. Anka's a broker, not a friend. What motivates ND5 is his duty. She can't be trusted. But beyond that, it would be redemption, freedom, and a search for purpose. We've got a welcoming committee. He's been assigned to watch over her, and at the start, she really doesn't like that because she doesn't need a babysitter. I'm guessing you don't work in a team all that much. It is not my preference. Yeah, you and me both slowly as their relationship progresses, uh, he starts to care for Kay. As much as a droid can care for a human, she sees it as, you know, he shows up, he, he comes through, and that's something that Kay hasn't always had. I think he's like her confidant. Um, ultimately, they have great chemistry, probably much to his dismay. Ultimately, they become friends. Hiding some of those telltale features uh, and some of the scars of battle with the trench coat was something that the art team really gravitated towards. 
it tells a story of MD5. There's so much detail in it. There's like all small damage and small wear and tear. There's some dirt here and there. We really wanted to show that this he's been wearing this jacket for a long time and it does have a meaning to him. And we put a lot of effort into the details of it. Doing uh, mocap as a droid is, is difficult. You have to use the voice and the voice and the body only to express yourself, but you're a droid. So you can't be very expressive with your voice, mm -hmm. and you can't be very expressive with your body. So it was uh, there was a lot of fine tuning in the process, but I think we found a comfortable balance, and we found some personality. He did a fantastic job of really bringing that character to life in a very grounded, realistic way, given that he is this big, heavy, old droid. Then the animators would tone down the humanness of it, so it feels more droid-like. I said, run. He's got to learn how to deliver his lines without any noticeable breathing. We tend to breathe on the end of lines. So, where do we go next? And then within all of that, he has to act, right? He has to be this character. What does a petty criminal from Cantobite know about droids? Oh, he knows all kinds of things. It's a constant challenge, but it is a lot of fun. As soon as we met in person, uh, we had instant, like, great banter. We joke around a lot. We care for each other, but definitely shows on screen and in the game they need to have a special bond and i think the relationship between him and i like how he's just got netting on him for the um for the jacket so for mocap to bring that to life cool looking good i think there was one other one something about world building an open world let's watch this one and then that'll be me I like Father Erasing, that's cool. Silo Savak. You wanna race? You sure you wanna stick your nose into this shit? <laughs> oh, what we get into, buddy. When you start diving into this Star Wars galaxy, you have so many different options. We crafted the open world in the sense that you have different landmarks, things that can pull you and catch your attention, but also things that you can stumble onto. In our case, for example, the, the approach to progression with experts. Where are they? What can they offer me? How do I reach them? And once you reach them, there's an adventure uh, there for you. On your way there, you want things to make you go, oh, what's that? Throughout the world, there are some hidden or buried treasures that is interesting for Nyx. So Nyx will alert Kay to these treasures with his cute little squeaking. Reward curiosity has been a very central tenant for us thinking about the open world. And it ranges from civilians being attacked by pirates to playing Sabak. Sabak oh, I cannot wait to play Sabak. Castle Sabak. You have to get the lowest match possible with your two Sabak cards, and then you can bet each round and try and win some money. With Favio Racing, you can make bets on tables of the holograms of the races. I wonder what the economy of this game is going to be like. versions of arcade games, a ship shooting one and a speeder one, and they can be played mostly for fun, trying to get a high score. We have contract brokers. They will present you with various different types of contracts. There are contracts where you have to infiltrate certain areas to go in and steal specific items for a syndicate and then you usually have to, to make a drop that's the point you usually get a choice to betray your employer you can finish the job as normal and get paid or you can actually give the item to another syndicate for hey, reputation anybody? but that's gonna hurt your uh, reputation really which uh who are we going with in this the better your reputation I do like the idea of allying with the huts. Higher stakes jobs. Uh, Crimson Dawn can suck a dick. And those are the ones that are reserved for when you have very high reputation. But I also don't like the pikes, <laughs> so I feel like I might be going with the huts in this. So there are lots of different conversations that. Or I'll just fuck everyone over constantly. Things like passwords into areas the location of hidden treasures in the world, and also opportunities to further position herself with some of the syndicates. We landed on a roster of five distinct worlds, which are Akiva, Toshara, a brand new creation, Tatooine, of course, the fan favorite, Kijimi, 
and Kanto Bite. Oh, you do get to play a little bit on Kanto Bite. Hell yeah. I wonder if that's just the start of the game, or I wonder if you can go back there. actually really explore all of those aspects. Star Wars locations are very, as biomes, very strong statements. Like, all of Tatooine is a desert. Uh, Kijimi is perpetual night and winter. On Akiva, it's more the winding jungle roads. It's a little bit more narrow. Toshara, the windswept moon, which is fairly fun because it allows us with the embering to create ramps and wall rides. We wanted all of the locations to provide players something, whether it's about the world, telling something about the law of Star Wars, or just the world building. We crafted that massive. So designing the space areas was uh, super fun. So we distinguished there a little bit between regulated space, which is the empire controlled, which is the black space with stars, and then we have the unregulated, more hidden, kind of more dangerous space. It's also a place, of course, where different quests and contracts take you. You should fly in close and have a look. You will definitely find precious things that you need to, at the end of the day, make your ship even more capable to explore further. Uh, it's a different type of Star Wars story. I just don't like the look of that ship movement. It's just she one of those really things. By the books. She wasn't really trained in, you know, the ways of one particular fighting style or anything like that. But she's just using whatever it is that she can in order to survive. And I kind of tried my best to bring that into the music itself. Sometimes I'll use found objects. I'll play real instruments, but intentionally play them the wrong way, like, you know, playing a guitar on the wrong side, using the tuning pegs as those strings instead of the actual guitar. These are improvised instruments rather than well-defined, um, perfected ones. We did a lot of uh, That's recording cool. trips, which not only gives us freedom in terms of implementation, but also gives us a lot of this unique source that makes us stand out. You'll be able to hear the score and also diegetic music sort of react to the story that Tay is undertaking and bring life to those environments. It's the first open world Star Wars game and figuring out what that experience is like I think we landed on something that feels unique from any of the Star Wars games that we've made so far. The game is loaded with references to Star Wars comics, Star Wars books, uh, but of course all of the films and characters that players love. We really think that players are going to discover many, many, many nods and they're all intentional. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty keen for this game. I'm pretty keen for it. I think it looks good. I hope it's good. Uh, I don't know when the review embargo is. It's gotta be coming up soon, surely. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm not gonna be like reviewing it really because I don't really know how to approach reviewing a game, and I'm also not going to be like rushing it out. So I'll definitely do like impressions videos and stuff like that. Maybe do like a quest or two. Uh, on a video, but yeah, uh, I think this game looks good. I'm really looking forward to this game. I hope it's good uh, But yeah, the only two things story hasn't really sold me yet and the ship movement combat stuff Hasn't really wowed me at all. But anyway, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you for watching if you made it this far uh, Let me know what you think about Outlaws and uh, I'll see you next time. May the force be with you always <laughs>